Hey everybody, Hunter Fisher, Trapper, Trader, Guide, Scout, and Interpreter, and Country Cook, Steve Hall here in Nashville, Tennessee, along with Pretty Miss Sheila, doing a great job on that camera. Hi, Sheila. Hi. Today we're going to do a southern treat, actually a great treat all across the country, fried green tomatoes. Now, for you city slickers out there that don't know what a green tomato is, it's no more than a red tomato that's not ripe yet. So you go out to your garden when the tomatoes just get nice and big and they're real green like that, but when they start turning slightly red, it's too late to do fried green tomatoes. So when they get nice and big and real super green, pick them, bring them in, slice them a quarter inch thick. Now there's a lot of recipes that will tell you, oh, cut them as thick or thin as you want. Cut them thin or thick, whatever you like. Not necessarily. If you cut them thin, they'll burn. If you cut them thick, they're kind of mushy. A quarter inch thick, just like that, is about perfect for fried green tomatoes. Now, I just turned these over because I salted one side, and now I'm going to salt the other side slightly because we want these tomatoes, they're very dense when they're green, they got a lot of liquid in them. We want them to sweat and pull some of the moisture out. So I got them laying on paper towels. We're going to give them about 10 minutes. We'll be right back. All right, I'm just finishing turning them over. You should see them sweat after about 10 or 15 minutes. Pulls a lot of liquid out of there. So they're ready to go into our flour, seasoned flour, our buttermilk, seasoned buttermilk, and into our panko breadcrumbs and all that. Come on over here, let's get started. All right, our oil is rolling up past 300, heading for 350, so we got a minute to tell you what we're going to do. We just started out with some just all-purpose flour, and we've got this seasoned with salt, white pepper and garlic and I can I'll put it in the description box below but it won't be exact amounts just I would say use a cup or so of flour maybe a cup and a half and maybe use like a teaspoon of salt maybe a teaspoon of white pepper and maybe a maybe a tablespoon of garlic or a teaspoon depending upon how much you like garlic now here is our buttermilk and in our buttermilk we're going to add some hot sauce, a few shots, a little hot sauce that I bought at the 50 cent store. In fact, we'll put a few drops in there right now. You don't have to use this if you don't want, but we're just going to give her a few little drops of hot sauce in there. Let me get a handy dandy spoon. So we're going to kind of spice up our buttermilk just a little bit. Let's see what our temperature's up to. Huh? About 320. So we got that a little bit spicy, not a lot, just a few little drops for flavor. Then we're going to roll it in that seasoned flour, in that buttermilk with that hot sauce, and into our panko breadcrumbs. Couldn't be any simpler. Now I'm using canola oil, and you can use peanut oil, you can use vegetable oil, you can use whatever you want. The only reason I stay completely away from peanut oil, no matter what I'm cooking, is because people have peanut allergies. And if I'm doing a fish fry or something and we've got 20 people over the house and we're all serving fried crappie and I'm using peanut oil, somebody might have a peanut allergy and I just don't want that to happen. So I use canola oil on just about everything. I just love the flavor. It cooks great indoors and out. And uh, let's get started with our fried green tomatoes are all sweated because we salted both sides and put them on paper towels for about 15 minutes. And let's start dipping and putting this in here. Got about 20 degrees to go, so let me turn the camera off, and when it hits 350, we'll get started. We're right at 350. So let me get my little gauge out of here. Start taking these tomatoes and mashing them in that flour. Shake off the excess. Just dredge it in the buttermilk into our breadcrumbs. And you be careful. I use my fingers, but I lay them right in there. Now a good dipping sauce for these is ranch dressing, but I've got a special dipping sauce I'm going to give you the recipe for and make it right here on the show and as soon as these are done. Just into the flour, dredge it in the buttermilk, then in there. And kind of remember where you put them in because they cook so quickly that you want to go to that one and turn it again in order of the way that you put them in there. So don't get away on me. I'm going to go ahead and turn this first one over. And you can also cook this in a cast iron skillet. 
All right, buddies. Look at that. Turned out just beautiful. I'm going to put them on paper towels. It sounds like our oil is cooling down just a little bit. So now we can slow down our process of putting them in there. Isn't that nice? Isn't that beautiful, Sheila? Pretty. Really, really a nice product. Now we're going to kind of take our time putting them in because we want this oil. I still have it on, on high all the way up over here on the side of this. And a cast iron skillet will actually hold heat a little better than this electric fry pan. So I should have used that, but it was just sitting right there on the shelf. And I thought, I'll just pour some oil in it and crank it wide open when it hits 350. We'll make these folks some nice fried green tomatoes. Let me get the rest of these cooked up. I think you get the idea. Just turn them over as they get golden brown. I'll get them all on the platter here, and then we'll show you our little custom dipping sauce. So I will see you in a minute. Talk to you in just a little bit. Here's another little tip that I do. When I get my panko breadcrumbs out, I only pour about half of them in this bowl because once you go through the flour and the, and the buttermilk and in here, it gets kind of kind of goopy on top. Now, you can pour the other half in and you're back to fresh dipping again. So it doesn't get so wadded up, so to speak. That's just a little tip. I only pour about half that breading mix in there for that, that uh, breadcrumbs. Then, you get a nice coating on the next few, and I've only got a few to go, so that's perfect. Let me get them little guys in. And I want to say, I forgot to say one thing. Thank you very much to Marge down there in Red Bay, Alabama. That's Sheila's Ma. These tomatoes came out of her garden two days ago, and I wanted to... I, and here's the thing is, if you pick them green tomatoes bring them in the house and you don't do something with them and cook them, they're going to turn bright red and you're going to have ripe tomatoes that are really good slicing. If you pick them green and let them ripen in the house, man, they get real nice and firm. we got some burgers coming up in a recipe and I'm going to use some of those big green tomatoes that I didn't get this recipe done in time and they turned red. Man, they're nice and firm. They're just perfect for slicing up for stuff. Looky here. Well, let me get the rest of these cooked, like I said before, and we'll be right back when we've got a platter full. I'll take that one. You want this one right here? It's not done on the other side just yet, so. No, it's pretty. It is pretty, isn't it? Okay, I'll save that one. That's a, are you sure you don't want the one in the middle over here? I'll take that one, too. <laughs> okay, you're up to two of them already. Wait till we tell you what's in this dipping sauce here for these babies. Awesome stuff. I'm not sure if I give credit to the green tomatoes or if I give credit to the panko breadcrumbs. It just doesn't burn. This is a real nice product. These have been cooking quite a long time and they just stay nice and golden brown. It's time to take the rest of them out of the pan. But I gotta say it really turned out such a nice product with those breadcrumbs. Marge, I hope you can see these down in Red Bay, Alabama. Thank you very much. These are the hot ones over here. These have been cooling for a little bit, so let me pick one out of the herd here and move these out of the way. And I'm going to try this because I want to give a little taste test of this. I got this in two dishes and there's a reason for that. Give me just one second. Wow, that just cuts so nice. I think what I'll do here, instead of dipping in the bowl, is I'm going to put a little bit on there. Mm. Oh, wow. Did you get me spilling on myself up here, Sheila, or did you miss that? No, I got that. Oh, <laughs> thanks a lot. Mm. Wow. Fantastic. Now let me tell you what's in this wonderful little dipping bowl right here. 
Most of the recipes that are on the internet for fried green tomatoes just say serve it with ranch dressing. And that's good. I love ranch dressing like anybody else, but try this dip right here. 50-50. 50% mayonnaise, 50% buttermilk. That's right. Half a cup of buttermilk, half a cup of mayonnaise, say to start with. Put in some fresh dill or do what I do. Just buy dill in the jar already chopped up. Pop that in there, maybe a tablespoon. Stir it up so you can see it in there real pretty. Put in about a teaspoon of white vinegar, a little bit of salt and pepper, and man, this dip is absolutely delicious. Now, here's the option that you can do or leave it. You can either leave it out or do what I do, and that is I take about a quarter cup, I'm not going to put it all in there, of real fine diced onions, and you just sprinkle a few of those in there. Maybe about a little less than a quarter of a cup, or just enough to kind of be there from time to time. There you go, right there. Then when you take a piece of this fried green tomato, ooh, I en even ended up with a little piece of onion or two. Buddy, that is out of this world. Find somebody like Sheila that's beautiful, knows how to run a camera, and has a mom that has a garden full of green tomatoes. Slice them a quarter inch thick. Salt them on both sides and let them lay on a paper towel for about 15 minutes. Get rid of that extra moisture because they're real dense when they're still green. Put them in some of those panko breadcrumbs after you put it in the seasoned flour and the buttermilk. Throw a little hot sauce in that buttermilk. I never even tasted it in there, but it just wakes it right up. Pick yourself up a little jar of dill so you can do all kinds of recipes without going to the store and letting dill ruin in your refrigerator. And then you can have some of these fantastic... I'm going to go do a little dunk in here because I can double dip because this is my house. And I hope you enjoyed coming to our house and watching some of our recipes. In fact, our little character Shotgun Red's face will pop up over there. We hope you click on it and subscribe. I'm going to take a bite as soon as I get to the end of this. And over here on this side, I'm going to put another recipe that I think you'll really, truly enjoy. So on behalf of myself, Steve Hall and Pretty Miss Sheila, did you have a good time, Sheila? I did. Man, is this the best fried green tomato recipe you ever ate? If it ain't, it ought to be. We'll see you next time on Cooking with Shotgun Red. And I'm going to take a bite as soon as it goes black on the screen.